So the next time domain specification that we are going to see is what I refer to as peak time in the case of a control system. So what do you mean by the term peak time in the case of a control system? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community but I am a Kajiri easy for you. So let us ask yourself that obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term peak time in control systems? Well, let's find out. So, when we plot the response diagram of a particular control system, we would get something like this. If this is the response time response along the y-axis and the time along the x-axis, and if this is the 100% of its value, then the response diagram would look something like this. And therefore, the peak time in the case of a control system is the amount of time that is taken for the purpose of reaching the peak value which is here. So this is the peak time in the case of a control system. So let us assume the time response in the case of an under damped control system which is given by C of t is equal to 1 minus e raised to minus zeta omega nt divided by root of 1 minus zeta squared into sine omega dt plus so this is the value of the time response of this particular control system. So what we observe is that at the peak time, when this value is at the peak, the slope of this particular curve is equal to zero. So in order to find the slope of this particular curve, all we have to do is differentiate this particular expression with respect to t. And when the slope is at maximum point, the rate of change of this particular value is equal to zero. That is, simply all we have to do is take the differentiation of this term and equate it to zero. So now here, let us take d by dt of c of tp, that is the peak time. So therefore, let us differentiate this particular term. So the differential of 1 is equal to 0. So this becomes 0 minus. So now here, this 1 by root of 1 minus zeta squared is a constant. So 1 by root of 1 minus zeta squared. So here, this is the multiplication rule of differentiation. Very simple, 11 standard mathematics. That is, first term in the differential of the second term plus second term in the differential of the first term. So writing it over here, we would get e raised to minus zeta omega and tp into minus zeta omega into sine of omega d tp plus phi plus e raised to minus zeta omega and tp cos omega d tp plus phi. So now here, for the maximum value that is at the peak value, this now would be equal to 0. So now, if this is equal to 0, then this term and this term gets cancelled. So here, e raised to minus zeta omega and tp is a constant over here in both the terms. So that also would get cancelled. So now, here, what we would get is that zeta omega and sine omega d tp plus phi minus omega d cos of omega d tp plus phi is equal to 0. But we know for a fact that omega d is equal to omega n into root of 1 minus zeta squared. So let us substitute this value over here. We would now get zeta omega and sine omega d tp plus phi minus omega into root of 1 minus zeta squared into cos omega d tp plus phi is equal to 0. So here, because this is equal to 0, these two omega n terms are constant and therefore they can be removed over here like this. So here, the interesting fact is that when we consider a particular triangle like this, a right angled triangle, so here, this value of phi, we know the value of phi as phi is equal to tan inverse root of 1 minus zeta squared divided by zeta. So here, if this is phi, tan phi is equal to opposite side by adjacent side. So therefore, this would be equal to 1 minus zeta squared and this would be zeta and this would be so here, what we observe is that here cos phi is given as cos phi is equal to adjacent side by hypotenuse, that is zeta. And now sin phi is given as sin phi is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse, that is root of 1 minus zeta squared. So therefore, when we observe this particular equation carefully, here we have zeta, which can be written as cos phi. And here we have root of 1 minus zeta squared, which can be written as sine phi. So therefore, let us substitute these two values over here. On substituting this over here, we would get cos phi sine omega d tp plus phi 
minus sin phi cos omega d t p plus phi is equal to zero. So this is of the form sin a cos b minus cos a sin b, which is simply equal to sin a minus b. So therefore, this is simple 11 standard trigonometry. So applying the simple 11 standard trigonometric equation for sin a minus b over here, we would now get this as sin of omega d t p plus phi, which is sin a and this is b. So a minus b is equal to zero. So therefore, this phi and phi gets cancelled. So we would get sin of Omega d t p is equal to zero, but 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 we also know for a fact that sine pi is equal to zero. So therefore, sine of omega d t p is equal to sine pi, which implies that omega d t p is equal to pi. So therefore, t p is equal to pi divided by omega d. Therefore, t p is equal to pi divided by omega into root of 1 minus zeta squared. This is the value of the required peak time in the case of a control system. As simple as that guys, very simple. This is simply the expression for the peak time in the case of a control system. So therefore this thus is a simple expression for the peak time in the case of a control system. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it. So I hope you guys now have clear understanding of what you refer to as the peak time in the case of a control system. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.